Hey, YouTubers. I'm going to do a little wrap-up on some work I did on a Mellings Performance 10295 LS oil pump. And I want to give you a little bit of a description and a little bit of an uh, explanation of how working these this style pump is slightly different than your factory pump. All right, guys. Normally, I do work on the Mellings stock replacement pump, which is just their base model M-295. So what I do on those is the same porting process that I used on this pump. But what I do is I remove all of, any, of the uh, as say sharp edges and uh, casting that sticks out in the flow of the oil going into the intake side of the pump. I don't do any modifications to the, what I'm gonna call the cavity and with a gear, where the gears set, but where I gain the most advantage on all these LS pumps is the other side of the pump that no one ever seems to mention. Okay, your outlet. From the cavity where the gears grab the oil from the pickup tube, build the pressure and push it out, there's a lot of gains you can, you can get in fl less flow restriction. Now, as you can tell on this pump, hopefully, I haven't made this hole much, if any, bigger, okay? But from the pump cavity to where it enters your block is, um, I'm going to refer to it as a dog's leg. Like, it comes out of the cavity and it turns two, at least two times to get to this point. Each junction where the, uh, I guess if you just call it a port, turns, there's large uh, casting flash or steps that would influ influence the f uh, wet flow characteristics of the oil pump. So basically I take and smooth out all those uh, casting, uh, they, you, oh, you'd have to call them steps. Because if you, when you get one of these pumps, if you pull it apart, you know, just basically take this cover off, carefully take your pump gears out and look down through the port that goes from your cavity to your engine, you're gonna see exactly what I'm talking about, those steps. Cause they're, 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 they're an eighth of an inch. Some of them are eighth of an inch tall that the oil would have to come out of your ca pump cavity Boom, boom, boom. Every time it turns, it's hitting a restriction to flow. So what I do on these, actually all my LS pumps, I take all them out. And then if you'll, I mean, if your finger fits in here, I got kind of fat hands. The short turn, the final short turn of this passage from the pump cavity to your block has like a ridge. Okay, so what I do is I lay back that angle and make a smooth, what, you know, what old, por old school porters talk about, waterfall effect. So I basically take that, that ridge out and make a nice smooth transition from the port to the block. Um, I don't make that, this area from midpoint to the block. That's all just clean up and making it ergonomically smooth to enter the block. Now on the pump cavity side, and you can see it in some of my other videos, and I do apologize. Um, I got the idea of doing this video after I had finished this and was getting ready to box it to ship. But from my pump cavity to the inlet, to the engine, from the pump cavity to this area, I take all the steps out. So basically as casted, it's gonna have sharp uh, steps and, and uh, transitions from the cavity to the port that takes the oil to your engine. So basically what I've done is lessen all of those transitions from the cavity to the port that takes the oil into the engine to promote uh, less restriction to the wet flow characteristics. So a lot of people talk about these pumps and they're like, oh, 
you know, making this side pretty, because I do polish this ramp and try to transition. I take my finger, anything I can fill up in there that's sharp or that could cause any kind of a tumbling or, you know, any kind of flow restriction, I remove it and then, you know, polish it out smooth to the touch. You know, it's not mirror finish because I didn't use that type of tool, but your, in your inlet to the pump isn't what makes porting these beneficial. I think the hands down, 75% of your gain to better flow is done on the other side, but nobody ever really mentions that. But I just wanted to talk about this 10295 pump because this was, it, I'm gonna, I don't wanna say anything bad about Mellings, but a lot of times when you order their pumps, they don't send you all the springs that they're supposed to. But in this circumstance, the 10295 pump is, is listed as like a stock replacement pump, but it has higher pressure. So what they'll do is they send it out underneath this plug is your pressure relief spring and cup. The red spring, if you look in uh, on their website, the red pressure relief spring is a 70 pound pump relief spring. Stock, here's another thing you guys need to, I wanna point out. Stock, Chevrolet, says their pumps are 60 pound. It's not really a true 60 pound pump. The factory oil pumps on the LS engines now, I'm, I'm talking prior to DOD, all that crap. I'm talking about the, the original LS engines. The factory pump's rated as a 60-pound pump, but the spring they put in there starts bypassing oil at about 53 pounds, okay? Which would be fine for a completely stock engine because they're not, you know, nine times out of 10, they're not revved over 5,300 RPM. But when you start exceeding, say, 5,500 to 6,000 plus RPMs, you now put that oiling system in a deficit where you're bypassing, you know, at 53 pounds, it's going to start bypassing oil, which reduces your oil volume to help feed your bearings at higher RPM. Bad combo. So what I started doing a long time ago was I do the port and what I call blueprinting, porting and blueprinting of these pumps. And then I would add a 100,000 shim underneath that stock spring. Well then Mellings, they sell a little bit higher quality spring, I guess, than GM did because they started selling a blue spring as a 60 pound spring. Let me show you what this looks like here had this all bagged up, ready to ship back to the customer. Now, this blue spring, that is a stock 60 pound spring. You can see I wrote on here for the customer. So if they ever, for whatever reason, wanted to change, they have a better quality 60 pound spring, which you could put a 100,000 shim on and bump this thing up close to around 70. It's going to be around 70 to a little over 70 pounds. If you put a 100,000 shim underneath this blue spring, you'll be at 70 plus pounds of, of oil pressure. Also with this pump, well, new, new pickup tube O-rings, but what's cool about this kit, the 10295 and I think the 10296 too of but they come with what they call the Copo spring. This spring, which some people call it natural in their videos, I think they're trying to say it's orange, but there's literally no paint on this thing at all. But this is a 75 plus PSI spring, okay? So when you buy these performance pumps, and I did say earlier, Melling's doesn't always send the springs with them that they're supposed to, but these Melling performance pumps give you three options. 
you could do a stock 60 pound spring they even give you an extra cap with blue loctite on it you could do the red spring which is going to set this up as a 70 pound uh, pump which is exactly what this customer requested or you can run this and that, now i will warn you if you're running the copo 75 plus pound uh, spring bypass spring you need to make sure that your oil pan and your oil capacity is above seven quarts, all right? To safely feed a, especially a high volume, because this is not a high volume, this is a standard volume, high pressure pump. If you put this big boy spring in there, make sure you have enough oil capacity to, to keep that fed. You know, if it was my engine, I would try to run about eight quarts of oil with that spring set up. But there's a lot of people who have gotten by running six to seven quarts. But I bet you at the top end of a run, or God forbid they're doing road racing or something, they're not really feeding that pump near as well as they think they are. So anyway, I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a, I don't know, update on some of the stuff I've been messing with lately. Um, I know you guys can't really see. Maybe you can see that. I've smooth the uh, transition to the pickup tube area everything is untouched from the o-ring out um, everything is uh, smooth all casting flash and ridges have been removed top bottom and center and then like i said your money's in the outlet side wet flow characteristics and help that oil go from the pump cavity into your engine more efficiently by taking all those stupid steps out of there that are left during the casting process. So anyway, that's my little video on the Melling 10295 pump. Um, if you guys have any questions, hit up the comments. I'm more than willing to answer them as far as I can. I'm gonna get this thing boxed up and get it in the shipping hands out to North Carolina. Thanks again, guys, for watching. Please like, subscribe, and share.